Hello everybody, my name's Adam Manning and this is a video about the movement of the Earth and the rest of the solar system through space. Now of course as we all know in ancient times people thought that the Earth was stationary and all the planets and the, and the Sun moved around the Earth. Then um, in later years uh, people like Copernicus, Kepler and Galileo realised after lots of observations that in fact it was the Earth that was going around the Sun along with all the other planets. And that came about through lots of observations and also the invention of the telescope. So, for example, Galileo, looking through his telescope, realised that the planet Venus had phases just like the Moon. And he realised that could only be because Venus was being illuminated by the Sun as it went round the Sun. Uh, in similar form, he also looked at Jupiter, the planet Jupiter, and he was able to see that there were four moons that went round Jupiter. And that was astonishing because at the time, everybody thought everything in the universe went round the Earth. So to see these little moons going round, the Ju going round Jupiter was astonishing and a, a complete breakthrough. Now at the time, there was a lot of religious repression and the authorities said these ideas were blasphemous and heretical. But eventually, after lots of observations, they realised that this really must be the case. And that in fact, the Earth, along with all the other planets, was in fact going round the Sun. And that was when that idea became really important. We're all familiar with the layout of the solar system. And, and we often think of that as a series of concentric circles with the orbits all going around the sun. So for example, with the eight planets, the eight outer planets, which are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, yes, I said Uranus, no giggling at the back there, and Neptune are all the four outer ones. And their orbits are very large in comparison to the four inner planets, which are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. So when you represent the solar system in a sort of top-down view, you've got the four inner planets very neatly arranged quite close to the sun, and the four outer ones are much more spread out. What we need to do is add some details to this idea of the orbits of the, so of the planets in the solar system around the sun, because they're not strictly speaking perfect circles as originally thought. They are in fact ellipses, and this is one of the most important discoveries of uh, Kepler um, when he uh, considered the orbits. They don't describe perfect circles, they're ellipses. Now an ellipse, you might think of it as a circle as seen from an angle, so a sort of squashed circular shape. And instead of having a centre like a circle does, it has two what you might call centres, which are called focuses. And one of the focuses is the orbit, the centre of the orbit of the planet. So, for example, when the Earth goes round the Sun, it orbits around this one of the focuses in its orbit on this elliptical shape as it goes round the Sun. It's also important to note that the, where the, the centre of the rotation is, is actually not necessarily the centre of the sun. Because when you have two bodies moving, uh, two planets, for example, moving in orbits, they orbit the centre of mass of the system. So, for example, when the Earth orbits the sun, the Earth orbits the centre of mass between the Earth and the sun. So, for example, if you think of two planets that have the same mass, if they were orbiting each other, everything else being equal, they would orbit the centre of mass, that is the midpoint between the two of them. And that happens with all the planets as they uh, re re revolve around the sun. But the mass of the sun is so huge compared to the planets that the centre of mass, uh, with one exception, is within inside the sun. So when the Earth revolves around the Sun, the centre of mass is actually within the Sun. The one exception is Jupiter, because Jupiter is so massive that the centre of mass between Jupiter and the Sun is just outside the surface of the Sun. So if you were to watch the Sun very carefully, it would actually wobble in a very small orbit like this around the centre of mass between it and Jupiter. Um, and that's one of the ways, for example, if you, were, if you were an alien living on a star light years away and you were looking at our solar system, if you saw that wobble of the sun as it orbits the centre of mass, you might work out that the sun actually had planets going around it. And that's one of the key ways that astronomers use to detect whether there, there's planets going around other stars uh, beyond our solar system. Another point to make about the orbits of uh, the planets around the sun is that if you imagine this uh, cake stand here, 
is uh, the solar system. And in the center, we've got the sun, and then you've got the orbits of the planets going round uh, the sun. It's tempting to think of the solar system and the orbits of the planets as a flat disk. So you might think of the, the planets going around the sun in a flat disk with no deviation. Well, in fact, what happens is some of the planets, the planets, each one of them has a slight inclination on its orbit. So they're not all at the same angle as they go around the sun. Um, but with the exception of Mercury, by and large, they're quite small deviations. So for the purposes of my animations, I've treated them all as flat. Mercury is the most pronounced, but, but again, it's not that widely divergent from a flat disk. But it's an important to bear, point to bear in mind that all the planets have a slight and different inclination in their orbits as they go around the sun. One further thing I want to say about my animations is that the orbits, the size of the orbits of the planets around the sun are all at scale. So, for example, that's why there's the inner solar system, which is all nice and neat. And then the outer solar system is much more widespread. So they're all at scale to one another, but the size of the sun and the planets are not at scale. They're just really to represent, roughly speaking, the, the size of them. So uh, the, you'll see the sun as uh, the, a, a large sphere in the center of the solar system. Then you might be able to see Mercury. Venus will be there as well. Mercury will be going very quickly around the sun. Venus a bit wide, more widespread. The Earth is in kind of a light blue color. Mars is quite distinct in an orangey sort of red. Uh, and then you've got Jupiter. You might see you might see the rings around Saturn as well. Then uh, Uranus is a kind of green colour, and then Neptune is a dark blue colour. So do have a look out for the planets as you watch these animations. Our model of the solar system so far then is the Sun sort of roughly at the centre of all this movement, and then the orbits of the planets being ellipses that grow as the orbits of the planets get larger and larger. Now uh, that's a very useful model. Uh, because we, but at the moment we're thinking of really sort of like a stationary disk sort of thing like this. But actually, the, the solar system is far more exciting than that because as the planets are orbiting the the, the sun, orbiting the centre of the mass of their orbits, the whole solar system is moving through space as the solar system orbits the centre of the galaxy. Uh, and that means that the, the movement of the Earth and the other planets and the Sun itself is actually very complicated because as you've got the planets going around the, the Sun, you've also got their movement as the whole solar system moves through their orbit around the centre of the galaxy. And what might be exciting to, to, to think about and to possibly model is the track or the trail of the planets as they go around the Sun, as the Sun and the solar system itself are moving as one body through the galaxy. Now, it's important to remember that uh, the, the solar system doesn't move in this sort of fashion at 90 degrees to the movement of the uh, solar system as it orbits the centre of the galaxy. In fact, it's at an angle, it's at an incline like this. So as the planets are orbiting the sun uh, and the, the solar system is moving around the centre of the galaxy in this sort of fashion. So the animation you're about to see depicts a trail of particles behind each planet as the planets are moving around the sun and the sun and the solar system are moving in its orbit around the centre of the galaxy. So what you'll see is a spiral or a sort of helix shape of the orbits of the planets as they move forward as the whole solar system is moving around the centre of the galaxy. Uh, and it's important to remember that this movement, the movement of the solar system is very fast. It's going at 230 kilometers per second. And the orbit of the solar system around the center of the galaxy takes around 225 million years. So this, this, the movement of the sun and the solar system is very fast and it's a very dynamic system.
So in that animation, we saw the solar system represented by this disk here. If you imagine the sun at the center and the orbits of the planets going out like this, the solar system is moving in this form as it heads through the galaxy. So it's inclined at an angle as the solar system moves forward on its orbit around the galaxy. Now, in that animation, I have to admit, I cheated somewhat. I've slowed the movement of the solar system right down so you could see these, this helix shape that the planets form as they move along their orbits as the solar system moves through the galaxy. In fact, the solar system is moving at this huge speed of 230 kilometers per second. And the animations that I'm going to show you now show that, show the scale of the movement of the planets and in their orbits around the solar system relative to the movement of the, of the solar system as it goes through the galaxy. So the movement forward is now going to be at the same scale of the size of the orbits. And what you'll notice is that instead of these nice spirals, the, the orbits of the planets look more like streams coming out as the planets move around the, the, the sun. They're more like streamers going out around the sun, a set of fireworks almost, for example, or streamers or trails going around the sun. So they go at great speed. And it's important to remember, for example, with the Earth, the Earth takes, uh, when it goes around the sun through the course of a year, 365 days, during that time, the Earth has moved nearly a billion kilometers as it moves around uh, the sun. But in that same time, the solar system, including the sun and the Earth, have moved along its orbit around the center of the galaxy over seven billion kilometers. So we're going much faster around the orbit around the center of the galaxy than we are around the orbit of the sun. So that's going to be shown in this set of animations that I'm going to show you now. And you'll see that the, the trail left by the planets, if you were to see that, looks much more like streamers running alongside the sun rather than these sort of loops, because the, the movement of the sun is so fast. Ladies and gentlemen, special thanks to my wonderful camera operator, my daughter, Elizabeth Manning. Thank you.